my shelves are a mess. Not so much these ones, they're doing all right, but I have some shelves upstairs that are a mess. I have some piles of books down here that I don't have a place for them on my shelves, so they're just in stacks on the floor. That's a bit of a mess. So it's time for me to clean that up. I figured I'd take you with me. We're going to do some reorganizing of my shelves, get them back in order. I have some bookshelves. Well, it's technically one bookshelf that broke in half, but now it's two bookshelves that I can put back together and use them for more storage so that books aren't just stacked on the floor. That'd be swell. And while I'm going through all my shelves and reorganizing, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of some books as well that haven't stuck with me that I don't really feel the need to hang on to that would be better suited to just go to my library. But first, before we do all that, we need to go to the bookstore. get into the reorganization, a shout out to today's sponsor, Babbel, one of the best language learning apps in the world created by language learning experts. I've been wanting to learn Spanish for a long time now because we went to Puerto Rico a couple years ago and I loved it and we really want to go back and when I go back I want to be able to speak Spanish at least decently. I loved Puerto Rico. I loved exploring. It's the most beautiful place I've been to. One of the most beautiful places I've been to but I want to be able to connect with people, develop friendships there, maybe do meetups if anybody I know is there. I want to be able to connect with people more and actually making an effort to learn the language of the land that you're visiting is a really good way to do that. So I want to learn Spanish. However, my consistency has not been great. I've been using Babbel for a few months now and I really, really like it. The lessons are really quick, so it's really easy for me to just do with my morning coffee, just do it right off the bat at the beginning of the day, and there's a check mark for the things that I want to accomplish for the day. But also, there's so many different things that the classes do, uh, different auditory, and they make you type some of it. They have different challenges and games, and it's just always switching up the ways that it's trying to engage my mind with the language, which makes me feel like, I feel like I'm learning faster this way, but I also, it feels fun and engaging to do, so I've stuck with it a lot better than I have with other things. Hola, soy la madre de Alejandro. Mucho gusto. ¿Usted es el profesor de música? Pardon, ¿tú hablas inglés? Ella habla italiano. Ella habla italiano. I do most of my lessons on my computer because it becomes a part of my work day, a part of how I start my day. It's just, it fits into my routine that way. But they also have a phone app that's super easy, super easy to use and really useful for when I'm away from home and just need to access my lessons there. So you can get 60% off of your subscription if you use the link in my description. All the information you need is in the description of this video, so check that out. So that clip, the bookstore clip was actually, I filmed I filmed that a couple of days ago when I went to the bookstore, but I just thought that it would be good to go ahead and do a little mini haul on top of the reorganization and the unhaul. Just make it a book video. So I went to the bookstore because I am currently reading Red Country at the time that I'm filming this and loving it, and I know that I'm gonna want to read I know that I'm gonna want to start the uh, A Little Hatred. I'll show you. I know I'm gonna want to start this really, really soon, so I just went to go get it. They didn't have the whole trilogy, so I just got the first book, but I'm sure I'll go back for more for the rest of the trilogy because I love Joe Abercrombie. And while I was there, I just started perusing. I just started looking around, 
because it's just it's just a very comforting thing to do in the bookstore and um, I was looking around to see if there was anything that caught my eye something that I wouldn't have heard of if I weren't just wandering the bookstore and I found the daughter of Dr. Moreau so this is by the same author that wrote oh you know what I don't think I still have it I think I unhauled that book whoops yeah, I don't think I still have it. It's by the same author that wrote Mexican Gothic, and I had really mixed feelings about me Mexican Gothic. I thought it captured the Gothic vibes perfectly. I thought it was a really interesting idea, but the hinting for the mystery was a little bit too obvious, and I figured it out way before a main character did, and also it was just very gross. The horror elements were very gross. And I read gross books. Like, I loved Uzumaki and The Troop and, like, body horror things. But something about the way this was done just didn't, it just, did, I, it wasn't, it didn't connect with me. But I did think that the writing was good and I did think that the story was good and I wanted to try more from this author, but I haven't kept tabs on her. So I didn't even know that she came out with another book and I want to read it. So I'm super excited because even if I have the same problems with this book as I did with the last one, even if I don't actually end up connecting with every element of it or certain things just don't suit me right, no matter what, I'm going to get a well-written environmental story in 300 pages. So no matter what, I'm going to enjoy what I've read even if I come away kind of feeling the same way as I did with the last one because I really enjoyed reading Mexican Gothic. It just wasn't fully a hit for me. So I'm excited to try this one. So these are the books that I've bought. They're going to go upstairs with all the books that I haven't read yet, but we have some work to do. So let's get organizing. You thought the haul section of this video was over, but joke's on you. I went back to the bookstore. You see, it's because The Winners was released, so I had to go. And now I have it, and oh my goodness. Us Against You is upstairs because I'm currently finishing up my reread of it, but look at, look at, well, my tabs kind of ruin it, don't they? Look at the size of Beartown. Us Against You, book two same size. Look at the size of the winners. Did I say winters? Look at the size of the winners. It's a beast. It's I think 670 pages. I don't expect that kind of page count from Bachman typically, but this is it. This is this is the conclusion to the trilogy. Quite frankly, I'm terrified. Anyway, I'm back. Totally new day from that other clip. And I have gone through a lot of books. Maybe I'll say that to the camera this time. And I've gone through a lot of books. I still went off camera. <laughs> Does she even YouTube? And I've gone through a lot of books and um, I have a giant stack of books to unhaul now. Let me show you. Is it wise for me to try to pick this up or is it foolish? The unhaul. Yeah, we've got some books. So I've gone through my books. These shelves don't look very different at all, but I have some books on another shelf and I actually finally made less of a mess of the shelves upstairs, so I'm pleased. So books that I'm unhauling, Memories of Ice, in my organizing my book 
adventure. I realized I have two copies of this and I don't know how that happened. Maybe, you know what, I do know what happened now that I think about it for more than one second. When it came time for me to read book three, Memories of Ice, I couldn't find this and determined that I just didn't own it and I went to the bookstore and bought it. I owned it. That's why we need to organize our lives. So this is gonna go to the library now. The Ship Who Sang, this was sent to me by my wonderful friend Lynn years ago. I attempted to read it and then forgot I was reading it. And, and now it's being unhauled. It just wasn't very interesting. I'm sorry, Lynn. But this is a classic sci-fi. I, you know, there's, there's just other sci-fi that I'm more interested in reading and I know I'm not gonna get to that anytime soon. The Cat Who Saved Books. I read this. I thought it was okay. I know I will never read it again and I won't reference it in future videos. And if I do, it'll be rare. So there's really no reason for me to keep it. Stardust by Neil Gaiman. I absolutely love Neil Gaiman and really, need to read more of his books because almost everything I read by him I love and I own a couple of books. This is a good reminder to read more of his books. Anyway, Stardust was one that I read recently and it wasn't my favorite. I didn't hate it. I didn't like it that much though. So there's no reason for me to keep it. Off to the library it goes. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Duplicate. I own two. Library. The Invisible Library. It, I didn't like this. I didn't hate it, I guess, but I didn't like it. It was just kind of all over the place and not very interesting, so it goes. Retribution Falls, the main character, was just one of the most unlikable people in the entire world. Also, the plot really wasn't that interesting either. It just didn't do anything for me. Which is a shame because this, I picked this up because it's by the author of The Ember Blade, which I don't think you can see from this angle, which is one of my favorite fantasy books <laughs> one that I've read in the last couple of years and whoops, The Bone Ships. Again, I should have enjoyed this. It, dragons, nautical adventures, it just wasn't that interesting. Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetis. I bought this, oh my goodness, years ago. <laughs> like, probably close to the beginning of my channel because I read one Ruta Sepetis book and I really, really enjoyed it. And I've been hanging on to it for this long. And it's still not been read. And I still don't really care to read it right now. So I know that this is a really well-loved book, but it's not gonna be me. The Hum and the Shiver. I bought this because I was going on a trip to the mountains to do some hiking and I wanted a mountain book. I didn't read this and I probably won't. So, library. The Dating Plan, um, I'm just not really much of a romance reader and if I do read romance, I'm pretty picky about what I choose and this probably isn't gonna get read. I've hung out onto it for a while because it's cute. It's a cute cover. So I thought, hey, maybe give it a go. But I still haven't, which is long enough. A Witch in Time, this, ugh, I love this cover. I really want to read, I want to like this, but I read about a quarter of it. Oh, there's my, yep, there's my dog ear. I read this far into it and there were just some things in it that were very, very hard for me to read and I put it down and I was like, I'll just take a break, I'll have a breather, I'll come back and I'll finish it because I really wanted to like it mostly because of the cover and I just never wanted to come back to it. So I'm just accepting that someone else might like it better. The Sweetest Remedy, typically if I do read a romance, oftentimes romances that deal with other things um, are, are the one that I, I want. So this uh, follows a woman whose, whose father um, died in Nigeria and, and she has a whole family that she never knew. Um, his, uh, the other half of his family. It's just her and her mom in the US um, but after her father dies and she gets called back to Nigeria for the funeral and for everything, she uh, finds out that there's this whole other branch um, of her family from her father's side. Siblings and everything and she goes to meet them and to grieve and to deal with family issues as well as maybe fall in love. I read, I think about a quarter of it and I just couldn't, I just, it just wasn't, it wasn't it. I just wasn't jiving with it. So um, again, I put it down thinking I'll come back to it. I never did, so for someone else. The Lincoln Highway, um, I, it was a book of the month book when I worked with them, which I have nothing negative to say with them. I say about them, I enjoyed working with them. But um, The Lincoln Highway was a book that they sent me and I don't know, maybe, why did I, 
I don't know why I kept this one. But I've never looked at it again. You made a fool out of death with your beauty. I was so sure I was gonna love this book, but I only read the first chapter and then I didn't read any further because the first chapter came out swinging. It came out swinging. Um, it, it it came out with a with a boom. Again, this is the kind of romance that I thought I would enjoy. One that um, that is more focused around personal life issues and then there's a romance happening in the background but the first chapter was just it was just very it came out swinging that's the way I'm gonna put it and uh, it was a pretty good indicator that it's not really the type of book that I typically read and then when I looked into it more there were a lot of complaints about the romance itself and I quickly realized that this isn't meant to be a romance so much as two people two very broken people being broken together and um that wasn't what I mean. I was looking for a romance. The X Hex, another book of the month that I hung on to, hung on to because I figured whenever I'm in the mood for romance, but again, I'm too picky with romance, so I just need to pick my romance and not, not have stuff for convenience. Keep stuff because of convenience. Half Sick of Shadows, I believe this is a King Arthur thing. Um, I the story of Camelot is hers, yes. I, uh, my friend was super disappointed in this and I wasn't interested enough in it to, that, that just swayed me in this direction. The Night Circus, I read one other Aaron Morgenstern book, um, The Starless Sea, and I liked elements of it, but as a whole I wasn't a fan, and her very, very, very lyrical writing, I have been told, is very active in this as well, and that the characters, again, just like the Starless Sea just aren't the strong suit, so I just don't think I'm ever gonna pick this up, even though I love the cover. Son of Storm, I read this, I enjoyed it, I didn't love it though, and I'm not gonna continue on with the series, so better suited for the library. And two more book of the months that I hung on to, thinking maybe I might get to, but it's been long enough now that I know that I won't. The Keeper of the Night and The Book of Magic. So those are the books that as I went through my shelves, I either decided I've read this and I didn't enjoy it enough to keep it, someone pass it on to somebody else to read, or I've hung on to this long enough that I'm just, I know I'm not gonna get to it. If I haven't gotten to it yet, it's not gonna happen in the future, so better suited for the library. I have been needing to reorganize my shelves and find space for some of the books that I've read recently for a while now, and making a video of it was apparently the only way that it was gonna get done. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing me bring a couple books in, get a lot of books out, and clean my space a little bit. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on this channel, Tuesdays and Thursdays on the second channel, which will be linked in the description of this video. I'll see you again soon. Bye.